Welcome back. This morning we are kicking off our series, Lessons Learned. And our next guest learned much more than she expected when she went away to college. She was a typical teen trying to find her way when one night her whole life changed. I was a freshman at University of Nevada, Reno in 2005. I was a straight-A student. I had to work really, really hard to get good grades. I was in a sorority. Um, I lived in the dorms and I loved it. I had a lot of friends. We went to the party and at first it was a great time. A bunch of people came into the party and they basically started a fight right away. And the music shut off, the lights shut off, and it, it was just very instantly like a brawl. I tried to get to the other side of the room and that's when I started standing on a couch. And my friend Ryan, uh, he yelled my name and he said, Katie, get off the couch. And when I heard my name, I turned my head and that's when I heard the gunshot and I immediately grabbed my face and I remember seeing and feeling the blood and just trembling. I kind of did one of these and every time I looked, it was more and more blood. And I knew there was no exit wound and I knew it was still in my face because the bullet was so hot and burning in my cheek. Um, it was a 45 caliber bullet, which is a very large bullet. I never saw the gun, I never saw the shooter, but I was grabbing my face and I was yelling for help. And my friends had come over that were still in the house. My friends kept saying, Katie, stay with us, stay with us, keep breathing, stay with us. And I was pleading with God. Um, makes me a little emotional. <laughs> I was pleading with God because I, I knew um, I knew it wasn't my time. And I remember saying, um, I'm not ready to go, God. I'm not ready to go. Oh, Katie, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Thank so you for having this me. whole series that we're doing is called Lessons Learned. So we're going to get there in a moment, but let's back up for just a moment. First of all, that friend that called out your name, mm. you were take me back to that moment. So you were standing on a couch or what happened? I was standing on a couch to try and get away from the fight. And I stood on the very, very top of the couch because it was very packed. And my friend Ryan, who actually is now married to my sister. Oh, wow. Small <laughs> world. Yeah. He saved my life. And he yelled, Katie, get off the couch when it started getting really bad. And I turned and right when I heard my name, I heard the gunshot and I felt it. And um, they said that it, had I not turned, then there would have been little hope. Is it oh true that God. doctors initially didn't realize how severe the injuries were? Yes, I was in the waiting room for two hours. What? Um, before they realized that the slug was still in my face. Wow. Because I was speaking, I was conscious at that point, and I looked a lot like that picture. And so they kind of waited until they realized I still had it in my face. So let's talk about how your life changed after that shooting. First of all, just in the days and weeks after that, how were you? The days after were very, um, I don't remember the days after a ton, but it was about six months after that I really feel like my PTSD began yeah, and that journey began. I think I was in shock in the beginning and then the grief and the pain. It was far more emotionally taxing than it was physically. And what whatsoever. was it, the fact that you almost died, frankly, or what was it about that? I kind of went through all of it. I went through survivor's guilt. I went through the fact that I almost died. I just completely changed. I was 19, so mm -hmm. it completely made me rethink my entire young life at that time. Wow. And those and feelings, they lead you to Africa. You start did, to teach yeah. in this orphanage there. I did. What did you discover about yourself in Africa? I was lost, and I think when it first happened at 19, I felt really sorry for myself. I think I was stuck in victim mode, and I talk about it a lot, and I really felt like I was hurting. Uh, Africa changed my perspective completely. I was very lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was on an academic scholarship. I lost that when mm. the shooting happened. So I took a turn for the worst, and I always had a heart for Africa, and I said I need to go put myself somewhere else. And Africa, for me, changed my whole world. Wow, I, you, you came up with a personal mantra. Tell us what that is. I can't completely claim it. Brene Brown is one of my favorite oh, authors. Oh, yes, love her. She's like my girl. Yes. And uh, she talks about being a victim to a Viking all the time. A victim and, to a Viking. Yes, and yes. that is where the freedom came in. As a victim, I was in complete pain and horror. And as a Viking, I finally took the choice that at some point we can't control what happens to us. And we're going to have pain, but we don't have to suffer. And the suffering is optional. And at one point, Africa took me to where I didn't have to suffer anymore. So a new series is called Lessons Learned. Yeah. What's the lesson here? 
What did you learn? To be vulnerable um, emotionally and to lean into their pain. I think that we, we all have pain, whether it's divorce, grief, death, loss. You've been loss. through. You've done, yeah. Yes, after that came a, a marriage and a divorce, and it's a wonderful relationship now. And it's all, there's lessons in it all. And so my lessons are if we find the lesson in our pain, it just doesn't hurt. It becomes purposeful. And all of our pain is purposeful, all of it. If we wow. choose that, it's a choice. And I just looked here, the shooter was never arrested. No, no. And that was hard for me at first, but now I have such freedom. It has completely changed my whole world. Um, I mean, I'm here today sharing that there's hope and yeah. I can't even imagine my life without being shot. Wow. Okay, thank can't. you for sharing thank your story. You, and you're 31. Almost 32. Almost 32. Wow. I have to see where <laughs> Wait to see where life takes you. And you can read more about Katie's journey in her own words. We posted her blog on our website at today.com. Thank you. We'll Thank be right you. back.